right. Good morning, Brian. Uh, Good thanks morning. so much for, for joining me today. So I am joined by Brian LaFoe of um, Farm uh, Content Marketing and Strategy Agency. I will hand it off to you for a more formal introduction <laughs> and then we'll jump into to a conversation. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, as you said, Brian LaFoe, I'm our CEO of uh, not only Farm, which is our full service marketing, uh, strategic marketing agency, but also uh, Pathfinder, which is our business intelligence and marketing research uh, organization as well. And then just for uh, just for a little added excitement, we also run a uh, hard cider company as well called Clarksburg Cider. So why not? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just for Over. something to do. Yeah, yeah. So we've been taking this opportunity over the last six to eight weeks here to engage with our friends and partners in the community across a number of different industries, manufacturing, um, food production, and now marketing um, and content to really understand how you've approached uh, your business and your internal team, and also how what kinds of communications um, and discussions you've had with your core customers to help guide them in an appropriate direction during this time. So I'd love to get your insight today, Brian, on how you have thought about your people differently, how you've um, been forced to kind of reevaluate communication, employee engagement, and culture as we've uh, transitioned through this uh, unusual time. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, in some ways we've been lucky. I mean, we're in an industry that's built around communication and trying to connect with people. So maybe to some ways it gives us an advantage in, in situations like this or in environments like this because we do spend so much time understanding how our consumers for our clients mm -hmm. you know, think and act and feel that uh, in a lot of ways it makes it pretty easy to be a little introspective and think about our own employees that way. So, right. um, you know, we've as a lot of agencies are and a lot of marketing uh, agencies are, we've spent a lot of time and effort over the last, you know, call it five years, becoming uh, well-versed and working remotely, mm -hmm. um, mainly because uh, a lot of our clients are out of state as well, um, in major metropolitan hubs. So uh, in addition to being able to see them face-to-face, -face, it's also important for us to connect with them. So we've been able to carry that technology over, whether it's things like, you know, Microsoft Teams or, mm -hmm. Uh, with video calls or to, to transition with, um, you know, chat features and, and work from home schedules, all those things are kind of built into our DNA a little bit, um, okay. but this has definitely been an extreme. Uh, we're, we're also a social group of animals mm -hmm. <laughs> and we, we, uh, you know, collaboration is extremely important to our industry and to our company, the ability to be able to, to build, you know, something that's greater than the sum of its parts and that requires constant communication. So, um, I, I think our teams have done a really good job uh, doing that because we've given them um, a lot of autonomy on how they work mm -hmm. um, and how they set themselves up. But uh, I think more than anything else, it's taking those, um, taking that advice, taking a little bit of our own mess medicine um, and the things that we tell our clients and applying it to our organization, making sure we're open, making sure we're honest, making sure that ultimately we're uh, taking care of our people. Um, and that uh, we're, we're finding out what's relevant to them instead of what's just relevant to the company or to the organization. And those have all been uh, things we've received really good feedback on during the process. So. That's great. Yeah, I feel like this is employee engagement's time to shine. We've all talked about how important it is to um, really look at your employee holistically, not just approaching them from what's going to make them most productive at work, but understanding the other um, whole, you know, You're other responsibilities they have that may affect their ability to be engaged sure at work. And now more than ever, we're really um, looking, we're really too, having to sure understand the, that says, you know, the this total is my employee. Time. And I think yeah. my time that I need I've to get else realized as I've talked to other leaders like you, um, just asking just about just what are the, what are the responsibilities that have communicating with them, understanding that maybe nine to five doesn't mean that they, they have to be at work, that they can get work done around other priorities is resulting in more engagement. Um, more connection to the company vision. I don't know if you felt that same way, but it, it's been um, really exciting to hear other leaders that have been maybe steadfast in a belief previously that they had to be at the office, <laughs> being more open-minded to other yeah. work structures. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, from our perspective, it's uh, you know, as you said, taking care of the employees and making sure that we understand the environment they're 
they're living in. And we uh, were able to do that pretty early on with some employee surveys. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a really strong HR department. We have uh, somebody in our organization who's really dedicated to our cultivators, as we call them at Farm. <laughs> um, and they have, she's had the ability to be able to get a lot of great feedback about the challenges they faced at home, not just technology standpoint, but as you said, whether it's childcare or even just mental fatigue. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the the big issues we ran into pretty early on is, you know, everybody just wanted to make sure that they seemed busy because they felt like that was what was appropriate, you know, especially in a time like this where the economy has been a challenge and, you know, uh, business is a challenge, you know, people don't want to seem to, to let their guard down a little bit, let people know that they're either having problems or struggling a little bit or that they're not busy. And, uh, our ability to be able to communicate pretty early on that those were okay things that even, you know, as leaders over the organization, we struggle at times. We don't have all the answers. We have our bad days and good days. Um, and to take care of not only them from a, uh, from a workload standpoint and a workload stress, but also from a mental um, state and making sure that everybody's okay and that they're feeling that uh, the organization cares about them and their situation and not just the work that they're doing. Sure. Yeah. The idea of empathetic leadership, I'm sure, has just been, is a really important concept now more than, more than ever. So um, I understand you guys have already a great culture, one that, you know, employees really enjoy each other's company. How <laughs> I think so. <laughs> what is, and I, I believe that I've heard that from a number of people. What are some things you've done um, kind of remotely or virtually to try to maintain culture? I'm really curious about, <clears throat> excuse me, how companies plan to maintain some semblance of culture when you can't huddle around a water cooler or great new office like you guys have. Yeah, absolutely. And especially in a, in a creative environment like marketing and advertising is, uh, you know, the, the, not only the people, but what they believe in and, and how they interact is so important to what we do. So, um, you know, when you take out things like, uh, you know, what we call like farm show and farm college, where we get together as a group and have an opportunity to share information about clients, but even just what we do and interests. When you take that out of a physical building, um, you know, that takes away some of that culture. So, um, we, we've done some things like uh, we have a great uh, tradition on Thursdays, typically when we're in the building called Thirsty Thursday, where we all gather around and, and grab a, something to drink and talk about what's going on in the industry in the week or with our teams. Um, we've taken that digitally uh, and taken that remotely so that we actually, through uh, Microsoft Teams, our tool, we have the ability to get together every Thursday and still do that and share not only what we're working on, but how our lives are going and pictures of our dogs and, you know, uh, kids and all those great things that you want to see anyway. And it, uh, that was something that uh, when we did our internal survey came back pretty strongly is the ability for people to feel like they could be social in addition to getting work done yeah. um, through the technology was a really big positive. And, um, you know, I think, again, our culture is, is about taking care of our people. Again, we don't make widgets. <laughs> we don't have inventory. Yeah. Our people are our most important asset by far. So um, making sure we take care of them has been a big part of our culture anyway, but it's become even more so even um, our executive uh, team here, our leadership team, has actually reached out individually to people. Um, we all have kind of a group of people that we check in on, make sure they're doing okay and making sure that they're not having problems. And is there anything that we can specifically do for them? So I think it has, um, as managers, not only from the leadership team, but even our team leaders and other people who manage people within the organization, it's turned them from guidance and, and maybe to some extent authoritarian to service people. You know, how do we take care of the people that report to us? How do we make sure that they're getting what they need to do what's necessary for our clients and for the other people that we serve? So Yeah, that's really exciting. You know, I when I'm in talking to other people as well too, they've they've said I've never would have had the chance to meet someone's spouse or kid or pet. And it's really provided it's just really provided a much stronger foundation yeah. to the relationship that um you never normally would have had had during this. Have you noticed uh, more engagement from your employees? Have you noticed um, just more meaningful conversations and connections as a result of those efforts? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as uh, you know, we have uh, about 70 people in our organization. So, you know, when you start to get up to that size, um, you know, growing from <laughs> what we used to be at 20 to 30 employees 15, 20 years ago, you know, it can be tough, uh, especially for somebody in my position to really get a chance to sit down and talk to people on a regular basis and really kind of get a chance to, to, to be around everybody within the organization. Um, mm -hmm. And Surprisingly, despite the fact that we're remote, I've, I've had a lot more opportunity to have individual conversations with people, whether it's you know, via video chat or just a quick phone call or even just you know, personal notes to be able to send to them. Um, I've, I've learned a lot more about of our employees, which is to me is a great, great yeah. unexpected uh, surprise in all this, but right. um, we're also feeling our employees feel more comfortable engaging everybody across the organization and that it's not just their managers or the people that they normally sit with or are exposed to on a daily basis. You know, I've had a lot of people reach out to me with suggestions about how we come back to work eventually or suggestions on how we do things better. Um, I don't always get that feedback you yeah. know, when, when we're in a building and there's the kind of normal hectic uh, schedules that everybody has to to deal with. So it's been a, a pleasant surprise. And, uh, you know, I think our engagement is up significantly. And I think part of that's because of the situation. But I think part of it, too, is the, the work that our team has been doing, especially our HR team and making sure that people feel like that's OK. Yeah, that that's fantastic. Yeah, that, that's yeah. really great. And a good segue to the next question I, I had for you is you we start to think about our future state. How are you thinking about maybe realigning or doing things differently within your organization to meet this future state, whatever it may be? Yeah. Yeah, again, I think, you know, we're lucky because of that, you know, remote nature being built into our DNA to not have to rush things. Um, I think there's a lot of, again, from our kind of internal uh, uh, temperature surveys, we've understood that there's still a lot of anxiety about what going back to work, at least from a physical standpoint, is going to look like. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not only concerns about know what we're specifically doing to clean the place or to you know make sure that we limit uh, contact or social distancing but also to how that affects our business long term and how the ability to still collaborate long term and, and some of this flexibility and and the good thing is I think we found a happy medium where we realize that we're going to incorporate and keep some of the things that we've learned and some of the current environment intact the ability to get rid of um, we talk about the work from home guilt that uh, previously when you worked from home, you felt a little guilty that you yeah. weren't in the building, even though it was okay and we said yeah. it was okay. Totally. Um, yeah, that's eroding to some extent. And we see people start to say that, you know what, I, I can spend more time at home and actually be maybe more effective and efficient in some of the things that I need to accomplish. But there are things that I still need to long-term feel like I need to be connected, mm -hmm. feel like I need to be collaborative in a space with other people. So finding that right balance. But to me, again, I think it goes back to honest communication, that understanding that we don't have all the answers, right. um, eliciting feedback and making sure that we get that, but then making sure that people understand what the plan is. Um, and, and we've started to implement that with hopefully uh, reopening in Western New York, you know, hopefully weeks away <laughs> right. um, for us, that people feel like this is, this is a long term, it's a marathon for us, it's not a sprint to get everybody back to the building. And again, we're lucky that, you know, we don't have an assembly line or, or you sure. need to have to get everybody in a physical space where they have to be there. Yeah, yeah. Have you noticed, Brian, either you or your employees have been working exponentially longer because there isn't the commute to break things up or it's just so accessible? What are your, what are your thoughts around that? I'm genuinely curious because some days I find myself back on at times when I would traditionally <laughs> be driving and when I would have that time to mentally reset. But, um, yeah. you know, you seem like someone that is connected a lot and likes to be connected, but how yeah. have you been able to create boundaries around work and recharging? Yeah, I think from, a, again, from an industry that used to eat a, a 70 or 80 hour work week or working on the weekends or at night is not something that's foreign to us. Yeah. Um, but again, that, that physical environment of where you work and, and being able to set some of those boundaries up, I think a lot of people have understood the importance of having a physical space in their home mm -hmm. that feels like it's their place, that it's that comfortable workstation or office or whatever it is. Um, even some of our younger employees who maybe don't have, uh, you know, some of the space or share, uh, you know, living arrangements with other people, yeah. you know, they've started to set up their own boundaries and realize the importance of that, you know, getting yourself in a frame of mind. But I think also, too, uh, you know, kind of 
adjusting and understanding that your situation may be different than somebody else and, and gravitating towards what is comfortable, what fits for your situation. We have a lot of people that, of course, child care is a huge issue for them yeah. right now. Um, a lot of senior level people that, that have to juggle that with, you mm -hmm. know, a, a spouse or partner that uh, has their own work considerations. Sure. And, you know, we have people working, you know, three, four hours in the morning and then taking a good chunk of the day and then coming back at night. We have some people who are gravitating more towards a, as we call it, a PM shift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but that's okay as long as the work is done and as long as we have set boundaries as an organization. You know, we want people here during a specific time or, you know, if you have team meetings, making sure you're available during that time. Mm -hmm. um, but also, too, making sure that you block out that time that says, you know what, this is my family time or this yeah. is my time that I need to get something else accomplished. And I think there's a lot more understanding to that and less guilt, which is which is you know, a very positive thing. Yeah, I can totally relate to that, to that guilt yeah. And, yeah. and finding the appropriate boundaries and, and the juggling at that that everyone's trying to navigate through. So Absolutely. so shifting gears and, and maybe a last question here to more of the, the industry focus and your core um, service as a marketing and content firm. What are some of the things that you've been hearing from your customers and also um, really been having discussions around what your, what your clients should be focusing on as they make an effort to, to connect with their core customers? I've read a lot um, that you've recently put out about just anticipating trends, looking at data, ensuring that you are thinking about the future, communicating in new ways via video. Or So talk to me about that. Yeah, I think there's a, a lot of opportunity um, in this. Um, the, you know, again, as, a, as the ability to be able to, to guide our uh, clients' strategies, not only from a communication standpoint, but even in some case product positioning and, and all those things that are important to marketing. As we've said, um, you know, the ability to stay nimble has been a, a huge, uh, something that we've been a big proponent of. That, things are changing so rapidly and nobody has a playbook for this. So um, while you may not want to plan out a year or six months from now, but by going through that process and understanding what the challenges are, what are potential opportunities are, it gives our clients the ability and, and we as consultants and, and uh, the ability to guide them the opportunity to think more clearly in the moment um, and to react a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think, we've seen it in the industry and we've seen it in the trades. There's a lot more empathy in advertising, which isn't always the case. Mm -hmm. um, understanding that people are going through challenging times, whether it's, you know, unemployment or um, just dealing with, you know, sick family members, whatever the case may be. And the ability for brands to show a little bit more of that human side um, mm -hmm. has really, really been a positive effect on, you know, brand perception, brand recognition, but also just being able to connect with customers. You know, as we say, it's not always about the sale. It's about the relationship mm -hmm. um, with a lot of the industries that we serve. And we want to make sure that, you know, there isn't damage to their relationship in the race to try to gain sales or some kind of financial commitment from people during this time. And our clients have really embraced that from the banks that we work with. You think about all the financial challenges they're dealing with right now with, with their cost to customers, to the automotive industry, which is essentially shut down, mm. um, to, you know, even the retail, the retail environments, um, the, the clients that we work with. And understanding that there's so many challenges for people to either step into a store or even to buy online, even so for such basic necessities like groceries, uh, an industry that we work in. So, you know, that empathy has gone a long way for people, the feeling that, you know, brands actually do care about their customers um, and the ability to, to show that, but also too, to make sure that they feel like the first question out of, out of that relationship is, you know, are you okay? And is there anything we can do for you? And then getting to the, okay, how other ways can we help help you or serve you uh, as a more of a secondary message, which to me is a, is a great evolution. Um, and it's yeah. not something we always get from a reputation standpoint of, <laughs> you know, advertising and, and trying to take advantage of things. I think clients have really reevaluated that and uh, understood where their customers sit. But um, to me, the, the, Again, the pleasant surprise in all this is the ability for our, a lot of our brands to take risks that they wouldn't have previously, um, whether it's trying out a new social media strategy or, you know, investing in a channel that they might not have previously when people are changing 
<laughs> their, uh, their viewing habits so much. A perfect example that we're seeing a huge uptick in streaming integration and video integration. Um, it's something that it's hard to move away from how you've done things when they work. Yeah. Um, that is not always the case right now. Um, as consumer habits are shifting so much, we're seeing a lot more clients take chances mm -hmm. that they wouldn't have previously because they feel like now is a good time to do that. Um, and they're learning a lot of great things about how they can interact with their, with their customers, how they can breed not only you know, purchase, but also advocacy, um, which is important for a lot of the brands that we work with. Um, so whether it's embracing streaming systems or trying out new digital strategies or social strategies, our clients are really starting to embrace um, emerging technology and things like that during this time to be able to, to, to see that return on that investment. That's great. Case in point, I don't think I ever would have jumped on the video bandwagon despite our <laughs> marketing, our, you know, our marketing consultants telling us, no, this is what you have to do. And we resisted and you know, I, I think there's some quote I'm paraphrasing, but never let a good crisis go to waste. And it's no. so, <laughs> it's so good to hear that your clients are are embracing taking risks and and being a little bit more progressive in their thinking and and how they um, engage with their customers. Because um, yeah, I think I think collectively we're a little bit more open minded to to the unknown or taking risks now because we're just forced to be in it. So that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. how true. How true. Great. That's great. Well, that's really all I wanted to talk about today. You know, my focus was to understand mo primarily about your people. And it's really refreshing to hear that sounds like your team has really stepped up to the challenge of, of, of even greater collaboration and, and communication. So um, I appreciate your insight and I'm glad to hear that you remain busy and, and well. And so thanks for taking the time, Brian. I really, I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. I know you guys have done a lot of great work for us over the years and have been one of the people that have taught us how important our people are. So, you know, we appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we look forward to seeing everybody on the other side of this, but also, uh, you know, helping people guide through this as well. So likewise, likewise. So thanks again.